So redox reactions, as the name states, is just short for oxidation reduction reactions. And these are pretty important because most things in chemistry rely on the interaction between the outermost valence electrons. And for two things to react together, something is going to probably be giving up an electron and something's going to be gaining an electron. So um, that path or flow of electrons is, is a pretty important thing to study. So we have oxidation is a loss of electrons. And if we wanted to write, let's say, a half reaction where we had A, if it lost an electron, it would then obtain a plus charge, and the electron would then be uh, taken from it. Okay. Similarly, if we stated that a reduction was a gain of electrons, If, uh, let's say, substance B had an electron added to it, it would then obtain a B, uh, a negative charge to become B minus. So the charge um, that uh, a substance has on it after the oxidation or reduction reaction will tell you uh, which one it was a part of. Oxidation, it's going to lose an electron. Reduction, it's going to gain an electron or electrons. So <clears throat> let's take a look at, for example, um, these groups of elements here. Okay, and keeping in mind that on the periodic table, electronegativity increases in this direction. That should uh, give us a hint as to how these elements in, uh, say, group 7 are going to behave. Because electronegativity means electron loving. And if we were to write that here, if I could spell, that would help. So electronegativity. Uh, is electron loving, and you can even see it if you break down the word electron, right? And these guys love electrons so much uh, that I like to call them bullies. And the reason why they're bullies is because, at least insofar as these uh, group 7 halogens, they're going to try to take that one electron from anywhere to complete the octet. Okay. As a result, everything in group 7 will ultimately obtain a negative 1 charge because it just needs that one electron or that gain of that one negatively charged electron to make the octet. So as a result, you're going to have um, F minus the charge on a chlorine ion is going to be Cl minus. The charge on a bromine ion is going to be minus 1 again. And uh, of course, iodine is going to become I minus. And minus just means that it has a minus 1 charge. That one can be invisible. If we wanted to write it in, that would be OK too. So minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. In terms of reactivities, the reason why fluorine would be the most reactive because it's the most electronegative. And it's going to be the biggest bully because it has all that, that power, all that strength to grab that one electron from anywhere. Fluorine is a very dangerous element to work with as a result of that. Because it can pretty much react with anything to take that one electron. So the reactivity of these guys is going to go up as you go up the periodic table. Okay. Now as for the group sixes, they're going to act in a similar way. It's just that the charges on these guys 
are not going to be negative 1, but they need two electrons to make the octet, so they're all going to be negative 2. So you have oxygen is going to have a negative 2 charge, uh, sulfur is going to have a negative 2 charge, selenium is going to have a negative 2 charge, and so on and so on. And 9 times out of 10, these guys are going to be bullies too, and they're going to take two electrons from somewhere to complete the octet to make eight. To ultimately create a negative two charge ion, or if it's an ion, if it's a, if it's a negative uh, ion. All right. So let's talk about the other end of the periodic table, the group one and group twos. Now, these guys, remember, have one valence electron. These guys have two valence electrons. And uh, since they're so unelectronegative, uh, what I like to do is call these guys the wimps, right? So it's kind of like between group one, group two, group three, and group four, it's almost like the electro, uh, I'm sorry, the periodic table is divided into two parts between the wimps and the bullies. Because <clears throat> They're not going to get reduced or gain electrons like the group sevens, uh, group sixes, and group sevens. These guys are going to get oxidized. They're going to get their electrons stolen from them. So that's why everything in group one, for example, um, let's say lithium, is going to have a plus one charge, and sodium. So it's going to have a plus one charge because it's going to have a tendency to give up an electron because it's not that electronegative. Uh, same thing with potassium, plus one. What are going to be the charges on the group twos? Well, uh, similarly, Be or beryllium, since it's not that electronegative, one of these other guys on the right is probably going to take its electrons, and how many does it have to donate? Well, it has two. So the charge is going to be plus two. Magnesium, uh, this metal is going to be plus two. Calcium is going to be plus two, and so on. <clears throat> so these guys are all uh, wimps because they're going to be oxidized. And these guys are going to be the bullies since they're going to be reduced or take the electrons. All right. Now, let's talk about the reactivity of the WIMPs. The reactivity of the WIMPs is actually going to be opposite, and here's why. In other words, reactivity is going to go down this way. And the reason is because since they're donating their outermost one or two electrons, depending on what group it's in, it's going to be more loosely held by the elements with larger atomic radii. So, since atomic radii increase this way, which makes sense because as you go um, down on the periodic table, you're going to have larger atoms, depending on the type of element you're talking about. There are going to be a lot more electrons shielding the outermost electron from the nucleus of that um, element, or actually from the, uh, the nucleus in inside the atom of that element. For example, let's say you had something like uh, potassium. All right. And let's compare that to sodium. So potassium here and sodium over here. Now, based on the atomic number, sodium is 11 and potassium is 19. Okay. So, they're both in group once, but now sodium is going to have 10 electrons between the nucleus and its outermost electron. Let's look at potassium. Potassium is also group 1, although it's going to have 
18 electrons shielding the nucleus and its outermost electron that it wants to give up. Both of these are in group 1 and they both have one electron to give. But since potassium is more loosely held, let's just draw this up here, it's going to be more reactive since it's donating an electron. Okay. So the more shielded um, elements are going to be the more reactive. In other words, the larger ones, the ones with larger atomic radii. So in terms of reactivity, both the WIMPs and the bullets are going to be reactive. But since the WIMPs are the ones getting oxidized or losing an electron, reactivity is going to increase this way. And because electronegativity increases towards the top right, giving the group 6s and especially group 7s more muscle to take electrons, on the right side, reactivity is going to increase this way. So that's oxidation reduction reactions. And it um, comes down to knowing which ones are the wimps and which ones are the boys.